Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Paint Table. It's my weekly show where you see what I got done, what I'm working on, and what is coming up. So this was the last week of On The Paint Tables for 2020. Um, and in the new year, I might do like a roundup or a recap or something like that. Uh, like getting close to, to the first of 2021 of like what I painted this year. I lost track though. Hey, I'll be honest, this was one of those years where like... Uh, previous years in the GMG resolutions page, I, I would like meticulously keep track of all the miniatures I painted. I was painting so many miniatures at home. I spent so much time at home this year, obviously, because of all the writing I was doing and of course COVID and all that stuff that I kind of like, I was, I was painting more for pleasure this year than to get things done. And that was really good for me. And like not caring, like not sweating what I painted, I think was a good, a good like mental, um, thing. I, I know I can paint a lot of miniatures, so like for me to pledge I'm going to paint X number of miniatures again this year was just like, it was additional stress layer in my painting I just didn't need. And so I just didn't care. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off uh, next week some of the highlights, like things I'm happiest with or maybe things I enjoyed painting the most just in collections. Uh, I definitely painted in the range of like six to 800 miniatures this year. I know, I know I did. I just, I haven't kept track of which exactly ones they are. So I can't really pull them all down, but I do know ones I painted this year versus ones I painted the previous year. I'm gonna pull down some of my favorites and show them off and we'll do like a recap of just some of what I painted, but I'm not gonna, I spent three hours pulling it out last year. I think I'm gonna do that this year. Um, so let's take a look at what I painted this week. I had a ton of stuff show up this week as well to start painting in 2021. Tons of new projects, way more Battletech stuff. Big thanks to the guys at Catalyst Game Labs. Um, a project kicked off. I had Nathan Carolyn from um, Weird Games message me about getting back into Malifaux and all the new things they were doing, the Explorer Society. Um, and they were even nice enough to send some stuff to Owen and Mike too, so that we can do some painting between now and when we start playing through lockdown. So I'll give you a look at that. Um, some really cool new stuff for Gamma Wolves. Uh, yeah, and I've got, I've got my um, 1666, my Giga Robo stuff to work on too. Uh, tons of stuff for AOS I want to do for Realm Quest. Uh, yeah, I got a million, like I'm actually inspired for like a million painting projects right now, which is gonna be tons of fun. Um, but let's take a look at what, like, what got done the last of the year. What was my last models that I painted this year? And then um, take a look at what's coming. Here's my only model painted this week, the Fomoroid Crusher, or as I call him, the Fomorian Krampus. Um, <laughs> you saw him yesterday in my little GMG Christmas special, and I've been sitting on him for a bit um, for my Slaves of Darkness, but this is nice. It adds 100 points of Slaves of Darkness and some crazy like terrain crushing stuff too. Um, to the the slaves army that I have, and then uh, this beautiful model, of course, is a big bad guy um, villain in solo games of Warhammer Underworlds Shadespire, which of course you can check out yesterday. So I painted him just from a black primer. Um, I dry brushed him dark stone uh, from the um, uh, army painter range, uh, and then up through ash gray. Uh, I did all picked out all the metals, all the other colors, and then washed with strong tone, um, the leather and the red, like all the cloth and stuff, and all the metallics. And then went back and just picked out some highlights. Um, the scarification, the scars and stuff. I actually blended a little bit of orc blood and white into the ash gray to give it that kind of like purpley, raised, scarry blood sort of like tone and then the rocks have that green um sort of like bent to them because i took the black or dark shade i think it's called from army painter and i mixed a little bit of green into it and then it was some water and then gave it that nice kind of model green effect basically you can save a bunch of time painting by starting a model off completely one color like gray and then just toning it differently with washes and layers um and and picking out the colors and making them slightly different so I'm happy with him. It was, I mean, I did this in a night. I just like between wrapping presents, basically, uh, the other night, and he looks great, and he fits my army. And I managed to match all the colors I was using with my Slaves of Darkness too, actually from that army painter line, which I thought was really handy. Um, I was, I was the armor um, brass, armor brass, armor tone, armor metal, something like that. <laughs> armor bronze, armor bronze, maybe, um, is really similar to um, the the gold that I was using, the orc gold. Uh, as is the the highlight tone. So it's, it's a good match for the color scheme I was already doing and I'm really happy with it. Lots of projects. Oh my gosh. Wow, just when I thought I was done, I'm back painting battle mechs. <laughs> I got a really, really kind care package from Catalyst Game Labs. Um, They're really happy with the just uh, the games that Owen and I are playing and we look like we're having a lot of fun. So they sent along some of the Kickstarter stuff uh, for me to paint and a clan army for Owen. So awesome, we don't have to share armies anymore. Um, he's gonna be painting up a whole bunch of stuff uh, and um, we'll be playing a whole bunch more of uh, Battletech going forward. And also we're gonna try out um, classic Battletech or just Battletech. The original edition of Battletech, which we have the Total Warfare rules. And of course, because we have the beginner box and I have the starter set from um, 
painting up all my great death legion uh i have like the the, the basically the, the beginnings of a um a nice big uh uh, hex mat collection and uh, the rules to play like the original version of Altec. It uses a lot less models, so I don't have to really do any painting. I can just paint with what I play with that I have, um, and no one can play with what he has. And then they also sent along this, which is new, which is the Battle of Tukayad, I think it's pronounced. Don't even, don't even ask me. Um, but this is a campaign book uh, for one of the major battles. It's almost like the Kursk of uh, one of the eras of. Um, which we'll call it, it's, uh, of um, the Battletech universe. And so it's a huge engagement, tons of factions there. 20 galaxies from seven clans with 12 armies of Comstars, Com Guards, like, had a war. And for 21 days, it was the largest campaign battle in like warfare unfolded to decide the fate of the inner sphere. So it's this huge battle. Um, and this allows you to play, like, from basically any faction's point of view, a lot like linked, linked narrative games. Um, and then this stuff, I, I made a joke about this, if people took it so seriously, but they sent along some of this Kickstarter stuff I didn't have. So I have the, the Griffin now from the Beginner Box, because they sent along a Beginner Box, which is awesome. So it's the only one of the Inner Sphere Max I hadn't painted. Um, and they all sent this little guy. Look at him. This is the guy everyone was talking about. He's the urban mech. So he's like an urban pacification mech. He's not meant for warfare. I think of this as like um, in Pat Labor. These are the like cop mechs. Uh, they're they're not meant to like go head to head with like other like like clan mechs and like massive amounts of warfare. They're meant for like urban pacification, like fighting like you know crime bosses and stuff like that. But look at how cute he is. Little tiny mech. He's like 16 points. Um, and I really like this design. It's like R2-D2's legs got longer and then he just like had guns mounted to him. He's super cute. I'm pumped to paint him. I'm going to do him as like an urban pacification mech though. I think I'm, easy, I'm either going to do him as like a, um, a military police or just like straight up like a cop one. I might do him like, uh, like, uh, what's his name? Like Prowl from Transformers in like the, the black and whites. You know what I mean? Like the old, the old like 80s style black and whites cop, st cop car style. I think that'd be fun. I'm gonna probably paint him that way, uh, as just like an urban pacification vehicle, and then and then I can just stick him in any of my inner sphere armies and just have him like tag along. This is the cop that showed up. He was getting too old for this. Uh, and then yeah, the Griffin. Um, a lot of it's very it's very similar to the Wolverine, but like up armored, has kind of cool around her head and stuff too. Um, and I'll paint him up. I think probably is Great F Legion. I only have one, so I have to decide if I'm gonna do it as my uh, Donegal Guards or um, Great F Legion. Probably as the Mercenary Unit. Um, and then speaking of Great F Legion, these are the uh, legendary Mech Warriors, and they're all from either different mercenary companies or like have like an interesting story. So. Uh, Morgan Cal is a um, Cal Sounds uh, like mercenary character, and this is his archer. And you can see these are all variant poses. So this guy's like kind of running with like an arm in the air. Um, this is uh, Grayson Carlisle, which is the founder of the he's the founder of the Great Death Legion, the mercenary company. I painted all of my um, my uh, Game Warmer Combat Max as. So perfect. I have their leader now, <laughs> which is awesome. So I can paint him up in that scheme, obviously. Um, and then this is Natasha Kerensky herself, the Widowmaker. Oh, no, wait, wrong one. Right here. That Timberwolf Prime uh, is this one. This is the Widowmaker. Uh, and she is a Kerensky, so like a descendant of the dude who leads the Star League Defense Force off into um, like the outer space, basically. And it's a really cool repose with like different guns and this cool like little chain gun down here, too. It's got some mold lines, but whatever. I mean, this is all plastic miniatures. I can clean off mold lines. That's no big deal. Uh, and then last but not least is this Timberwolf Prime with like a different uh, different leg spot, which is Aiden Prides. And he's like a redeemed, like a fallen mech warrior, basically. He fails like his trial of combat and then like takes the name of a dead guy and come back, comes back and like, tries to do it again. Really cool model. Um, all these models are super cool. But like you get two clan guys and two inner sphere guys, uh, which is kind of neat. Although I think, I think maybe even Aiden Pride actually I think works as a mercenary at some point because um, he has to like get his name back. But uh, Kerensky works as a, she, she's part of like the, I think they were called the Widowmakers. I can't remember the name of her sub faction, but those are all her special rules, actually. Um, but she has like a she spends time as a mercenary, and then eventually gets like elected the leader of Clan Wolf. So yeah, so five more battle mechs to paint for me right now. I'm uh, sorry, six more battle mechs for me to paint right now in a variety of colors. I might just adopt the Timberwolf and the Archer into like my other factions and not bother with. Um, Paint them as special characters because I'd rather just have the cool variant post battle max. I'm in my own armies, and that's totally acceptable too. But big thanks to Catalyst for this. Um, 
we're pumped to try out some of the old uh, classic Battletech stuff when um, we get it a lockdown. And I'll probably do the Let's Play actually for it before then, just doing like by myself. Um, so you guys can see the, the differences between this and Alpha Strike. And then Owen's painted his Alpha Strike army, and we're pumped to play this when um, things open up again. All right, robots, I have the Ignition Core Zero Edition starter minis that I'm going to paint up for Gamma Wolves. Um, I was so excited to, to get these. These are kind of like... I was a big fan of those arcade games. I used to play them. We'd, my school would take us on uh, ski trips, and we'd always like go back to the chalet afterwards. And all of my like my lunch money they would give me, I would just dump into the arcade. I'd play games like Metal Slug um, or 1942 or whatever, like side scrolling games. And I'm working on a Gamble Wolves expansion that's kind of like that. And I'm 100% using these models for, <laughs> for it. I was kind of like the plan. There's one, two, three. Like these are like like medium sized max like one, two, three really big ones. And then this is kind of like a big ish one, some medium sized ones, three medium sized ones and a bunch of infantry. And I thought this would be super fun for like a, a like a, a solo adventure. And I'm gonna paint these up um, probably as my first like post book release uh, Gamma Wolves expansion. I'm really pumped for these. They're beautiful resin casts. Um, you'll get to see them when they're all painted up, but they have this like awesome battle mech, <laughs> like chibi kind of feel to them. Look at the Oni with his big like horns and stuff. Oh, they're so cool. But I'll beat them up and grunge them up. This one's like a plane. It's like almost like a Veritech kind of thing. Look at that, it's got like the plane cockpit. No, oh, it's so cool. <laughs> I'm pumped to paint these. They're gonna be super fun to make. Big chunky models. Um, all I, I love this indie game stuff. It goes perfectly with uh, what I'm doing with Gamma Wolves. So I'm gonna get excited about these. Uh, and if you want to check them out, of course you can go to let's turn this around. Ignition Core Games uh, and check these out too. Uh, I don't know if they're commercially available yet. The Kickstarter I think is still uh, like being delivered, um, but they should be commercially available soon. And they're super. Cool. And then we're getting back to Malifo. Um, Nathan Carolyn from uh, Weird Games was nice enough to reach out and uh, provide me and Owen and uh, Mike with some new stuff to try out some of the new factions for third edition, specifically the Apex stuff, the whole new Explorer Society. This is a brand new faction. Um, I, I'm super excited about this. The Curious Adventurers basically all get together and have their own little like faction. Uh, and it's a new faction for Malfo. Uh, we played a bunch of third edition in the beginning. Me and Greg played it. I played some with Ben. Um, but uh, Owen and uh, Mike hadn't gotten the new edition. They hadn't played really since second, since M2E. Uh, so they're pumped for it. And um, Mike is going to be playing... Uh, the Bayou and Owen is going to be playing Arcanists. Uh, so he's he's excited. He'll you check out both their channels for some painting videos coming up. I'll be painting these stuff over the again the, the like lockdown break, um, and we'll start uh, we'll start getting back to some alpha because it's been a bit. Uh, but I love this new faction. This whole Explorer Society thing tickles my my cold Canadian heart. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm pumped to get it painted. Um, and you should see some stuff over the Christmas break in the next uh, the first of couple 2021 painting videos on the paint tables. You'll see I think probably all of this stuff painted because I got some time at home obviously during lockdown. Finally, painting. look what came in from Odiphius. Oh my God. Okay, so I'm gonna do the review of this uh, going forward, but I wanted you guys to see it early. This is the alt deluxe edition of Range of Shadow Deep, and oh my, it, when, when they say deluxe, it's so nice. It has this wicked old school vibe to it. Um, it's not a modern rule book. Like it's not like a glossy, like, like, like full color thing. It feels like a spell book. I feel like I would find this on like the bookshelf of Joe McCullough <laughs> with all his other, with all his old, like, I don't know, Civil War history books and, and history of like, uh, I don't know, the Carthaginian Empire books and stuff like that. This is the most Joe publication I think I've ever seen. And it's just lovely. Like they did a great job with it. There's of course like the print on demand stuff and you've seen all that. You've seen me play Rangers. Hilariously, I have an actual, I've played probably like 20 games of Rangers of Shadowdeep since, since Joe wrote it. And I don't think I've actually played it with a rule book yet. I think I've only played it with the, the Microsoft Word document he sent me in like 2017 or 2018. Um, this will be the first time I have an actual rule book to play. It feels weird, but it's so nice. It's got all the original artwork and illustrations. It's really nicely laid out. The quality is really good. I'll do a full review of it, but I want you guys to see it because it just came in and I'm pumped for it. So you got another on the paint table done on the books. Uh, I'm not going to do Witches and Wonders tomorrow. I'm taking the day off. It's Boxing Day uh, today when you're watching this. No. Yes, today when you're watching this. <laughs> but I'm taking the weekend off. It's the holidays. I'm going to spend time with my kids um, and my loved ones and just like be safe at home because uh, that's what we're doing. We're in a full lockdown right now in Ontario and we're in a lockdown until at least the 11th, most of Southern Ontario until the 23rd of January. Uh, which means I'll be doing lots of solo gaming content, lots of writing. Um, I'll do a big wrap up of the 2020 stuff uh, right before New Year's. So I hope you enjoy that for my final kind of like big 
big talk of the of the, the year. Um, and I do want to do some like I have some time to do some other stuff too. Probably some more live shows, sitting at home, like actually putting the camera on at home and maybe do some lists, maybe do some best ofs, maybe hang out and do some best ofs. Tell me what you think we should do uh, for the last week. I got lots of time at home and I'm, I'm thinking about doing some the things I want to do more of next year compared to 2020. And let's talk about it in the discussion and maybe we'll do a big group chat and, and do a live show too. So anyway, big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more On the Paint Tables in 2021. Tell that I'm Ash. How about you? I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.